and welcome to a guest interview special of the Indie Author Mindset podcast. Uh, we've got Stephen Moore here today. Uh, this podcast is gratefully sponsored by Ingram Spark, the award winning indie publishing platform that offers authors like you a way to get your paperbacks and hardbacks into over 40,000 bookstores and libraries worldwide. Let Ingram Spark take care of the details so that you can focus on what you do best, which of course is writing. Get started today at ingramspark.com. As I mentioned, I've got Stephen Moore with me here today. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, now, we've got you here to talk about co-writing, um, which you know a lot about. Um, you, well, you've co-written with me on the Sam Barker series, which I mentioned on the podcast last week. The new book, Betrayal, has just come out. So I thought it'd be a good time to, to get you on. We had a lot of people asking how the whole co-writing process works. And um, I thought, who better to ask? Because you've actually co-written with quite a lot of authors, haven't you? Yeah, there are a few now. Um, obviously, yourself. Um, I've got um, a series out with David Behrens. Um, uh, we are now um, just closing on and finishing our fourth book. Um, I've also worked with um, guys, lesser known authors at this stage, but I hope that together we can, um, can do something quite good. Luke Richardson, John Hopton, um, Jay Tintiano. Um, we, have a, we have a book out and the other two guys I just mentioned, our series are close to close to seeing the light of day. Elena Kaufman and um, Ernest Dempsey, who I'm sure a lot of your readers have, have heard of. We are in um, talks for a, a series later this year. So, yeah, quite a few different experiences, um, all slightly different. But, yeah, I, I, I guess I've got a bit of experience now. Yeah. I mean, what, what was it that kind of drew you to co-writing in the first place? What would you say are the, the benefits for indie authors of, of writing with someone else as opposed to, uh, I guess, doing it all on their own? That's a good question. And, and I mean, not, a, not an easy answer. I, I hadn't really considered it at all until uh, David Behrens, um, he, he, he just approached me. We'd, we'd been friends for a while. I've edited a few of his books as, as my sideline as an editor. And he approached me and asked me if I'd be interested. And um, as, as somebody who knew his books um, and enjoyed his books, I thought, oh, yeah, that'd be a great opportunity. I, I, I thought it'd be quite fun to work with somebody else just to see how that went. So that was the first one, David, and then through our through my friendship with David, and I think you and him and had a, you and he had had a couple of chats about it. Then you and I met, so that was the second one, um, and it just seemed like a great a great project. And I, um, you know, I I leapt at the chance to work with you on that, and I because I thought that would be a great a great experience too. And so far, it's proving to be such. And then on the flip side of that, I thought this is this is going well. This is a good opportunity for me to perhaps reach out to a couple of other authors. Who might just be starting out, um, and luckily, luckily enough, a couple of those guys said they would be interested in working with me. So um, it kind of went from there, really. I guess that's the thing, isn't it? I've I've learned as well through you know my sort of ten years in the industry that there are people who have been there longer than you, who have done better than you, who you sort of look up to and learn from in certain ways, and you also learn probably just as much from the people who are who are coming through now, who are doing things differently. Because I guess us kind of wise and old dinosaurs we you know we, we we know the way that things used to be done and perhaps hark back to those ways sometimes and have a bit of trouble keeping up with what's new and what's current whereas the people coming through now um that's kind of all they know really so they're in, in many ways in a in a better position so you, you can you can learn from everyone at every stage of their publishing career i guess can't you it must be the same on a writing front too i absolutely agree yeah i am um, yeah you know most most people would agree um you're one of the more well-known indies around so I've, I've learned a lot from from our experience of working together on the uh, sam barker series uh, and also with dave dave has a much better handle on on the the business side of the the, the industry than i do um but as an editor he he's learning a lot from me in terms of the writing he's a very good writer himself but we each have our different styles um uh, you know, and I have um, I have some qualifications in in writing in terms of teaching. So we've I've been able to bring that to the table, whereas he's brought his knowledge of the some of the settings and the and the ideas of um, the locations. So that that has worked very well. Um, and on the flip side, I'm working with I mentioned Luke and John Hopton and Jay. Those guys. Um, Jay's been around a while in, in the industry, but John and Luke are very new. But they they bring the energy, and um, they've you know they've got 
experience in other areas. So all together we combined with, with putting all of our different skill sets and um, experiences together and rolling it into one and, and um, all, all of them are looking quite good, quite good, potentially successful projects. Okay, so, so there will be quite a few indie authors listening to this now who are perhaps thinking about co-writing maybe it's crossed their mind before maybe it's something that they're only thinking about now they've heard this um speak to them what would you say to them um are the reasons why they they should go ahead and do that what what, what do you think they've they, they will have to gain um from what is i mean we'll, we'll come to this in a bit but it's a very very different way of working from what they'll um, inevitably be used to yeah, again, that's that's a tough question. First of all, I would say uh, choose wisely. I mean, don't don't just ask the next person that you can meet who who would uh, who'd be interested. Just like when I when I worked with Jay on our um, apocalyptic series, I had read a few of Jay's books and I and I had been thinking about approaching him for a while because because he's written in that genre. Um, if he'd have said no. Um, I probably wouldn't have gone ahead with that project because I needed somebody who knew the genre. So that's that. That's an important thing. Choose choose the person you approach wisely. Likewise, if somebody approaches you, um, you know, do your do your research. Don't just say yes to the to the first person that comes along. Um, there's a lot of trust involved. Um, you know, you have to respect the person's writing um, contracts as well. That kind of stuff. You have to be careful. The same as you would in any any industry. Um, do the research, take your time over any decisions, um, and see and see what it would benefit from you in terms of um, success, I suppose. Um, there's also the exposure um, working with different authors can give you. Um, obviously, I'm I'm much less uh, much further down the pecking order than you are, so this is obviously good for exposure. That's that's something else. But at the end of the day, it's um, it's a trust thing. You've got to you've got to be in it for the right reasons. It's it's art at the end of the day, not just it's not just a business. So you um, you have to be going into it for the right reasons, and just just be careful who you work with. Um, so far for me, all of my all of the people that have asked me to work with them, and likewise, um, everybody gets on very well. We're all friends uh, outside of the books. So um, yeah, be careful, but um, just be open minded. Yeah. I think actually what kind of struck me was when you mentioned that there was a series that you were working on, the co-written series, that wouldn't have got done otherwise. And I think that's that's very much for me what I've got um, out of this, out of the co-writing experience, is that the Sam Barker books just wouldn't be out and wouldn't be on the shelves otherwise. Um, because, you know, as I, I said to you, it's a, a vague idea that's kind of grown over time, but which has been there for me for probably two or three years. Um, and it's been kind of, you know, bouncing back and forth and popping up every now and again but it was something I didn't have the confidence or the ability or the um, the wherewithal to to start off on and, 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 and get it moving and get it out there so I think for me um, that's a big one I think we've all got perhaps ideas out there that we don't fancy taking on ourselves but with somebody else there to work with and bounce off I think that can be a huge advantage um, but I'm guessing there's got to be some some drawbacks to it as well. I mean, the, the process, I mean, I've only co-written with you, but I know you've worked with quite a lot of authors. How does the process differ between authors? Are there are there drawbacks as well to, to co-writing, things that um, perhaps you would, you would do differently now or um, any tips you've got perhaps for working um, with different people? Because I guess the dynamics are going to be different every time, aren't they? Yeah, that's that's also um, it's important. I, and I would go back to the um, my last point, which was be be don't just um, you know do your research who you're going to work with. I, I'm working with people who I've known um, either online like yourself for a, a few years um, or are personal friends. Um, the other three guys, Luke, John, and uh, Elena, are personal friends of mine and have been for a while. So I know them. I trust them. We're, we're friends first and foremost. So, so um, in terms of like the working relationship, there'll never be any um, issues of disagreements. I mean, artistically, of course, but you know, I, I have I have asked those, I have approached those three specifically for the for the project I had in mind because I knew they'd do a great job and they they would improve upon my ideas. Uh, and so far, that's 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 you know, the proof has been in the pudding so far. I'm really excited about those projects, but um, you know, if there were differences. We're, we're friends, so we could work them out um, in a in a friendly, professional manner. 
So, I, you know, it goes back to that last point, just um, have, a, have a good relationship with a person first, if you can. That's, that's the best way. I mean, I guess there also, there are no right or wrong ways of doing co-writing and collaboration are there i think pretty much as i see it um sort of everything is up for negotiation everything can be different between people there are different kind of shares in terms of work and uh, money and the order that things are done in who does the planning who does the first draft who edits things and um i i guess something i've heard you talk about before is always having a a lead author or a, a lead person in that partnership how how important do you do you think that is yeah, so in our case, this is the Sam Barker project is, is your project. Um, I'm, I'm delighted to be working on that with you, but you are the lead, the, you're the boss of the project, basically, I mean, in essence. Um, so I... I, I, um, I I'll, I'll take boss. I like that word. I'll have that. Uh, well, <laughs> there, there, I have other words for you, but probably your listeners don't, don't need to hear those. And, th- and there's that good relationship. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they should have heard what I was saying about you earlier. No, um... But yeah, so somebody needs to take the lead. Um, I mean, it could be a 50-50 split right across the board. But um, in my experience so far, it's better to have someone to lead, lead the project as you are with our project. Um, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm the lead for, my other, for those other guys. Um, they're, they're newer to this business than I am. So I've got a bit more experience and I've got um, a bigger a catalog of books. So, um, you know, th- but they're all fantastic writers. So... But they 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 they're new to it, um, as as I am with the collaborations. Even though I've got a few on the go, I'm still quite new to them. Um, there aren't too many books out at this stage, but they'll be coming thick and fast in the next three, six, nine months. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so, but it's good to have a, a lead a lead person to uh, to organise it, um, do the planning stage, um, um, and obviously in in our case, I think you know. Well, in, in my case, with those other guys, I'm funding the the initial upfront costs, the cover, the organisation, the marketing. Um, but then, but in terms of the writing, it's it's more or less a fifty fifty split. I'm I'm providing the the, the series outline up front, um, and much in our case, um, those guys will will come back to me with their ideas and um, a pretty loose first draft, and then it's a back and forth until we we settle upon a, a final manuscript that that we think is the best it can be. Mm-hmm. I mean, things obviously going very well on that front and you've got a great bunch of people you're working with and getting on with. Um, but, you know, the, the law of averages says at some point something will go wrong and I'm sure that a lot of co-writing agreements, there are ones that do kind of fall apart and people uh, end up not getting on. Um what tips can you give on that front? Would it be um, just a case of get prepared, make sure everything is down in contracts, and you know, you know where you go should things break down, or um, you know, if if that were to happen to you, what would be your kind of approach? What would you recommend that authors do to try and perhaps keep the peace and make sure that everybody comes out of this relatively happy? Yeah, again, another important point. Luckily, I haven't had any um, fallouts or disagreements. That there has been one. Um, series that um, I was working on with another guy obviously I'm not going to say any names we're still great friends so there's no issue there but in terms of the the deadlines uh, they were not met um, and the project fell very far behind and it had to come to a point I had to decide as the lead as the lead role on the project I had to decide should I keep waiting for this for the for the deadline for the next deadline or should I um, approach the guy and say look um, I'm afraid we're going to have to um, call this call this a day on this one, and and to be honest, in this case, he was he was relieved because he was finding it difficult with his other projects. So so it was an amicable decision, um, and the series is ongoing now with another guy, um, and we're st- our contract still stands. He he uh, he will still get you know his his share of the the royalties when the book goes live. So there's there's no issue there. In terms of like um, perhaps a not quite so friendly. Um, disagreement i honestly i don't know because that that hasn't happened to me i don't anticipate that hap- happening but i guess that's what the contracts the contracts are up front if for a reason yeah um, yeah um and i suppose it, and in the contracts i've got with my my team let's say um there there is it is written that if there is a problem uh you know that that contract will be between me and that person but um mm. there is a contingency plan and that will be that 
well, it's case by case, but yeah, the, the important message is to have a plan up front just in case something goes wrong. Yeah, be prepared. Be prepared, yeah. <laughs> be prepared. As I'm, um, as I'm and- sure you are. Well, yes. I mean, you, you've got to be, haven't you, at all times, really? That's um, because, you know, I say it so much in Indie Author Mindset Facebook group and on the podcast and everywhere else. You know, we are running a business. I mean, yeah, the business is is an art form. Um, you know, we are selling art, essentially, but we are selling. It is a business and it does need to be uh, managed professionally. Um, now, you, Steve, you said you're going to put together. I mean, we could chat for hours but as you know i try to keep this podcast fairly short we're really over time um you're going to put together i think a um an article some top tips perhaps things that we haven't got to and and reinforce some of the points that are made today um for co-writing for anybody who's interested in doing that aren't you and we're going to pop that um in the uh, patreon group for patreon subscribers um that is at patreon.com forward slash indie author mindset um well thank you very much for joining us today steve it's been um great talking to you and um you know introducing some of the indie author mindset podcast listeners to the concept of co-writing hopefully um a few of them will have a go at it now and perhaps um look at those um projects they've got sitting there in notebooks and ideas that they they want to crack on with but don't quite have the uh the, the, the wherewithal or the, the knowledge of how to start which is exactly how I got into it so um, thank you very much for joining us Steve have you got any last words um, nothing that you wouldn't say yourself which is um, if you're going to go into collaborating um, go in with an open mind it can be a great a great experience uh, very rewarding but you have to be careful like any other business choices uh, and finally I would echo what I'm sure you're going to say is uh, stay safe everybody stay safe and uh, do the right things absolutely absolutely stay indoors and keep writing thank you very much steve um to everybody else thank you very much for listening um i'll see you next week here on the indie author mindset podcast i think it's episode 18 i haven't checked but i'm going with that i'll see you then this episode of the indie author mindset podcast was presented by me adam croft the indie author mindset podcast is sponsored by ingram spark helping you get your book into over 40,000 bookstores and libraries worldwide. Get started today at ingramspark.com. The theme music for this podcast is by the Caesarians. Don't forget you can claim 50% off any Indie Author Mindset course by entering the promo code PODCAST at the checkout. Links are in the show notes. For more great tips and guidance, join the Indie Author Mindset group on Facebook. Facebook.